Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zs Caravalli from ZK Research, and I'm here in San Francisco at the RSA 2024 show. I'm joined today by Todd Hathaway from Worldwide Technology, also known as WWT. Yes. Right, uh, Todd, you are, uh, it says on your web, the website, Technical Solution Architect for WWT, but I looked at your bio on LinkedIn, and it certainly seems like you are the AI security guru. So, uh, a quick bio on yourself. Yeah, so, uh, I joined Worldwide three and a half years ago and have uh, been focused on app and API security in our global financial practice for most of that time, but about a year ago I got the opportunity to cross over and start focusing on AI application security and how we're going to help secure uh, the AI systems, the usage of AI by employees, as well as use cases for AI in cybersecurity. So I'm the global lead architect for our uh, go-to-market practice and helping identify new solutions and innovations in the in the area of AI security. Well, that's a big mandate. Yes. So uh, as I mentioned, we're here at RSA. It's D2. Uh, yesterday kicked off with the keynotes, yes. right? And everybody loves the keynotes. And so uh, there was a pretty packed uh, uh, keynote with a lot of different speakers. Anything catch your eye there? Yeah, it was really, um, I mean, quick, was Matthew Broderick opened it up from a great anecdotal standpoint, t took us back to 1983 with War Games. War Games, yeah. And looking, stepping forward into that and thinking about my childhood, really amazing to re reflect on what's come true in those 40 years. And then we went into Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, talking about the regulatory landscape from a global perspective and how we have to be responsible in not only the safe and ethical use of AI, but in the security aspects of how do we keep it out of the adversarial hands because of just as much good and innovation that we can do as a, as a society, there's also just as much bad that can happen from the adversaries. So balancing that, and then we went into a great keynote from Cisco, yeah. and they uh, spent a 30-minute uh, topic on HyperShield, which is the new AI security innovation from a data center fabric standpoint. And what really caught my eye as a security practitioner was the bringing EBPF or the extended Ber Berkeley packet filter to the forefront of sec the security conversation. It's been great from an observability standpoint for several years, but now we're going to start to see many more security use cases get applied. Yeah, and so that crossover between observability and security has been interesting to watch. Yes. Uh, in fact, even if you look at the uh, the def definition Gartner gave for SSE, digital experience monitoring is part of it now. Right. And so what do you think, you know, these are two worlds historically that have lived apart. Right? Absolutely. You can see things and you can secure things, but now they are together. What's, what's driven that, you think? Um, I think it's just observability has been obviously key to network performance, network uptime, things like that. And, but all of that ties into really a security theme. When you think about the CIA triad from an original security standpoint 30 years ago, availability is still security. Availability is where observability played in, but now we're starting to see, and this is a safer and more secure insertion point to get complete observability into the security layer, and it gives you now a new enforcement point that is not a inline network proxy. You can actually do things in the kernel level safely and securely that you never could do before. Yeah, and that allows Security to be monitored not just at the network level, but the cloud, but actually in the application. In the application, yeah. in the cluster, down to, it also helps. I mean, when we think about cloud security and how important it is, we, we could do a lot of things with agents on infrastructure as a service, but then you got into Kubernetes and platform as a service and, and functionless capabilities, and you had no visibility and no ability to insert security into those functions in the cloud. EBPF gives you that kernel level insertion point. So yeah. So uh, right now, though, we're actually, uh, and so that wrapped up the keynote slice of things. Yeah. We're in the Palace Hotel yep. uh, down on the first floor, and there's signage everywhere for an innovation summit uh, that Night Dragon sponsoring. And of course, you're one of the main sponsors as well. If people come over to this, what are they going to see? Um, it's going to be an exciting, action-packed event today. But uh, one of the key things from a worldwide perspective is we're we're really proud to announce that we're doing a uh, alliance with Night Dragon and with uh, the Biden administration here in Washington to really advance the InPower program and push forward uh, workforce development for cybersecurity professionals. So that'll be happening today on stage with Dave DeWalt and Kate Keene from our, she's our global lead of cyber uh, yeah. advocacy and she's a, and that'll help fill a lot of jobs that are missing in security today, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So in fact, and, and I, think I, I think I read somewhere in the U.S. alone, there's a shortage of several million, I think, cyber. It, and it keeps going, and, and everybody's saying, hey, let's use AI to answer that call. And AI is a at the forefront of augmentation yeah. and staff augmentation, but we still have to think about how to do that securely, how to do that efficiently, and when I think about the, the, the mantra in the security world that everybody's like worried, hey, is AI going to take my job? Yeah. No, AI is not going to take your job, but a security professional that knows how to use AI will take your job. So it's a tool. It's absolutely yeah, a tool. Yeah. 
and making sure that we build those processes efficiently and securely now and do it with good governance yeah. is going to be the key to success in the future and helping that plus the, the, the initiatives we're doing for human development will continue uh, to innovate. Okay, so when I think about the state of security today though, uh, there is a big gap and I know AI is being looked at to fill some of that and uh, let's talk about that in a bit, but uh, what do you, what's really driving security evolution today? I know remote work's a big part of that uh, and what, what, what kind of gaps is that created? Uh, remote, so we had the pandemic and remote work was driven in that drove scale and availability and, and access. But now as we kind of, I see the world coming a little bit back to normal, we've still got some of the same patterns and scalability and re the remote workforce is still very large. But what's driving it now is tool explosion during the pandemic. Everybody was applying technology to try to scale quickly. Yeah. And now we've got, a, I think, a, 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 tools yeah. and a consolidation trend of how do I do more with less, less tools. That doesn't necessarily mean, hey, I want just a single vendor to rule it all, but I want to try to reduce the number of tools and integrate what I have to work better together. And that's really a theme here at Worldwide right now is how can we help our, our customers consolidate the number of tools, still having best of breed functionality, best of breed efficacy, but at the same time, being able to reduce the cost function across the cyber org, as well as being able to reduce that overall uh, footprint of, of management dashboards. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out because what customers have told me is they are looking to consolidate down mm -hmm. the number of security vendors. I think when you look at just the overall spending in security, uh, companies are spending more on security now than they ever have. Absolutely. But now they're getting they're getting breached more often than they right, ever have. Right, right, right. So some, something's got to give, and I think uh, consolidation uh, is a big part of that and convergence yeah. of security. And tools. I think the missing word in this consolidation play is simplification. Yes. Is I don't care if I have 100 tools, if I can simplify and integrate them all together, that's really the key, which is probably hard to do with 100 tools, so you do need to reduce the yeah. number of tools, but simplification and integration is going to become the key. And how do I consolidate data? How do I do risk-based uh, vulnerability management and risk-based threat exposure management? That's all going to come into play over the next, that's, that's gonna be our key initiatives and using AI to enable that. Okay, so you brought up the A word. Yes. <laughs> So AI is being viewed as uh, by many as kind of the savior of everything. Yes. And security is one of those. You, go, you watch the keynotes and AI is coming and it's going to be able to automate everything. Uh, so give me a, since you know you, you do a lot of work with, with customers and get involved where they, where they actually are with deployments, where are customers at with their thoughts with AI? What do they like about it? What, they don't, what do they don't like about it? And, and is AI going to be as powerful as we all think it is? So that's a great question and has it depends on the persona you want me to answer from, but from the security professional's perspective, AI is an enablement tool for making cybersecurity professionals more efficient and actually driving an automation initiative that's been a priority for several years, but it's how do I do that automation effectively. From a business owner perspective- You can't really automate without AI, really. No, correctly, right, yeah. and, and, and <clears throat> the best use cases for AI right now are those automation and uh, RPA, the robotic process automation, things like that, that we've been talking about for years, but now we've got better tools that can help us do it faster. Okay. Now from the business side, everybody's like, hey, we got to do this, we've got to innovate, we've got to be cutting edge because our competitors are doing this. And what they're finding is after six, eight months or 10 months of experimentation, does the use case really help my business move forward? And is the efficacy of generative AI allow me to do anything in production from a customer facing standpoint. We're seeing great use cases for internal uh, document management, document retrieval with, with now retrieval augmented generation being very popular in RAG. But in the customer side, I think the, we still have a, a technology ceiling of where learning is possible for yeah. the large language models. And we've still got a large hallucination problem and is the large language model able to answer correctly 100% of the time? And is it able to answer the same, the right. two times in a row for the same yeah. question? So these are problems that until we address that, and, and right now, to be honest with you, we have a power problem, and we can't scale the models for training purposes to reach the 100% efficacy without a massive evolution of our power grid in the world, and I believe for, firmly, we're going to have to have some, some major advancements in the areas of nuclear and things like that to reach our goals in AGI and reach our goals in true intelligence. So that simplifies what use cases we can do with AI today. And I think it really people are starting to 
step back and go, let's think about how can I advance business with my AI use cases. The good thing is that it might make us rethink power, which we may not have before. So, Absolutely. So when I was talking with uh, Chris Conrad, who's your VP of yes. Security, uh, we were talking about Worldwide Technologies ATC, yep. uh, which is the Advanced Technology Center, and he dubbed it the AI Proving Ground. So uh, for the audience who's maybe not familiar with your Advanced Technology Center, talk about what that is, and then how can they use it to test some of this AI stuff out before they actually commit big dollars to it. Absolutely. So. I joined Worldwide three and a half years ago, and one of the things that attracted to me to Worldwide from a 26 year career in the vendor OEM landscape was coming to a place in the culmination of my career where I could now build solutions that were based on best of breed and I didn't have to sell what was in my bag as an OEM uh, sales engineer. And one of those reasons that Worldwide was so attractive was because of this Worldwide, or the ATC, the Advanced Technology Center. It's a massive uh, multi-billion dollar investment that's been built over several years, but it comprises four data centers in the St. Louis, Missouri area. And in those, we've got thousands and thousands of workloads from a variety of uh, OEM vendors and software manufacturers out there that customers come in and do lab as a service. They come in and do uh, POCs for new product evaluations. We do performance testing for them. We do uh, research of our own and write, publish our own WWT research materials. But as the AI explosion happened and our leadership, Mr. Cavanaugh, took a great interest in artificial intelligence and really invested heavily in moving WWT forward, he committed over $500 million to build out the AI proving ground okay. in the Advanced Technology Center. And that has proved very beneficial to a lot of our customers who are able to now that can't afford to build the GPUs out for experimental purposes, they can bring those workloads into the AI proving ground and validate the business case before investing in the in the in their own hardware or their own cloud infrastructure. So it's not just for security use cases. Absolutely not. It started as a uh, proving ground for all AI workloads, and security has been kind of added on. And we have another division of the Advanced Technology Center we call the Cyber Range, and the Cyber Range was built independently in parallel to help advance. Uh, security departments to be able to do real live fire exercises for red team, blue team, et cetera. And we host uh, public events, we host private events inside the cyber range. And now we're seeing the convergence of the cyber range and the AI proving ground to have AI security live fire use cases where we can now bring workloads and test prompt injection, test LLM firewalls, test re continuous red teaming capabilities, as well as uh, data de-identification and data obfuscation for AI generated content. Okay, that's awesome. So just one last question for you, Todd. Sure. So I think, uh, you know, if you go to the show floor, there's a whole bunch of different security vendors, some next gen. We saw some keynotes with some, you know, mainstream vendors, uh, you know, such as Cisco. I think it's fair to say that the, the, the job for a security architect today has probably never been more complicated, Absolutely. Right? but there is a demand to modernize security. And so if you could provide a couple of pieces of advice for people on, uh, for security pros, as they go down this path of trying to modernize security, what would those be? Think about simplification. Think about- Because complex is never yes, better. Yes, uh, think yeah. about integration. Uh, I've been doing this a long time in, in, in selling security tools and Looking back on my career, I would say that if you go to talk to like IT Harvest or some of those guys from an analytical standpoint, there's now 3,700 info security companies in the world. That's a lot. <laughs> and navigating that and understanding, and their marketing departments are very good at putting the newest trend buzzword on the materials and understanding how to wade through that. Work with a trusted partner. Pick a trusted partner that can help you wade through the marketing hype versus the reality, people that have tested and validated innovative solutions, find that trusted partner. Um, I'd love to have it be worldwide technology, but make sure you have that trusted partner who is spending time in the research, spending time in the labs, because all of the people that are practitioners are walking the floors, they've got day jobs to try to protect their enterprise assets. Let us help you with wading through the, the hype cycle of the marketing BS. Well, you can say yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it's g yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so uh, anyway, so thanks for that. And if people want to know more about worldwide technology they go to? WWT.com. That's simple enough. Absolutely. We're a 30-year-old company with, uh, with a, about a $3.5 billion cyber practice right now. Yeah. So 
I uh, would love to uh, see you at the WWT.com, register for the content. There's lab materials, there are research reports you can get access to, and we host a variety of events online and look forward to uh, potentially speaking to any customers here at the show. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I guess we got to go back to the show. Yes, thank All you. All right, so Todd, thanks for your time. On behalf of Todd Hathaway from WWT, I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on my next episode of ZCast. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.